Hello and welcome to another unusual episode of Storyboard. Uh, this week it's about change. Change at the very top of Ogilvy and Mehta. Uh, they were a new CEO, but he's not new because he's been there from 1978, which is a long, long time. I'm interviewing him and uh, you'll know who he is. I'm also interviewing the outgoing CEO who has been in Ogilvy from 1982. I'm also interviewing Piyush Pandey, who has been with Ogilvy from 1982 as well. Between them, 100 years, 100 years of continuity. And when you talk to the three of them and you listen to the three of them, you get a fair understanding of why there's so much consistency in what Ogilvy does across the world. Let's cut the chairs and let's first talk to the new CEO. Congratulations to this fantastic new job that you, you've got. Thank so, you so uh, much. So, what are the biggest challenges for you? I'm talking challenges positively, not in a negative tone at all. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, I think the, the biggest challenges I have really are growth. Right. Um, we live in a, an, an age right now where most of the world, not true in India, but most of the world is going through a bit of a growth crisis. Right. And, um, and so our clients' biggest challenge is growth. And they have to find that growth in whole new sources of business opportunity. They need new customers, they need to innovate, um, they need to stay ahead of their competition from a, in marketing and branding when that whole world is changing dramatically. And so we just need to be incredibly close to our clients and help them drive their growth agenda. And if, if we drive their growth, they'll you, drive ours. Right. You know, uh, you look at WPP and their income, you know, Martin keeps talking about it, it's now 75% non uh, madmen yes. kind of money. Yes. And off late he hasn't been talking to lovingly of the creative business. <laughs> so uh, how do you how do you react to something like that? I, you know, I think Martin's getting a little bit misunderstood. Right. I think what Martin is trying to say is that more than ever creativity is going to be informed right. by the data that we understand through consumer behavior, right. through how uh, consumers buy uh, goods and services and really how they interact with the work. Right. And we know more about that than any time in our history. Right. And I think what Martin is saying is the creative process has to be really connected uh, to that understanding and that knowledge. Right. And with it, then we should be in a really strong position to do more effective work. Right. That's what he's calling for. I think some have, have interpreted it as data and technology is more important than insight and, and creativity, right. I don't think he believes that for right. a moment. Right. Now, one of the things he's been, uh, you're inheriting really, is a very strong performance at Cannes and at the award shows. Yes. Is, yeah. is that a gift or is that a punishment? What, what is it? <laughs> well, the bar keeps getting raised. Right. Uh, in the case of Ogilvy, uh, right. we won Network of the Year for the fifth year in a row, right. which is fantastic. But I think the competition gets harder and harder. Uh, the work is changing more and more. There are more categories in CAN now than ever before, and I think that's, that's a reflection of the industry. There's just much more complexity, much more fragmentation, uh, and therefore it's going, to be, it's going to be hard to be the best at everything. But it's clear to me that uh, the brands that will win in the future will be the ones that can uh, bring content and creativity and, and uh, the technology and data together in new ways to, to be more creative and more effective. When you joined uh, Ogilvy in 1978, it was uh, easy to define your competition. You know, they were Thompsons and exactly. there's Low and so on. Who is your competition today? It's everybody. So on any given day, I'm competing against the major management consulting firms, Accenture, Deloitte, McKinsey, Bain, for high-end strategy and, uh, uh, and, and business advice giving. And I'm also competing with the upstart entrepreneur in a garage somewhere who's got a new idea, a new technology, a new app. Uh, and so, and it's everything in between. And, and that's, to me, in a way, an opportunity because clients are finding it very hard to cope with all that fragmentation. The Ogilvy brand is a very strong brand. We're known for a diversity of, of communications and creative services. And I think if we put clients at the heart of trying to solve that fragmentation problem, we will get uh, more than our fair share. But right now, we compete with everybody. Right. You know, you, when I asked you who your competition was, the first names you rattled off all the big consultancy firms. What is it that they do right, which gives them such high revenue, and the advertising agency business uh, comparatively low revenue? Consulting firms, I think, are very good at identifying trends and right. change. 
um, you know, they have to go in and diagnose client problems, and they often do that in the largest context of how clients need to compete. And, and so they start with a bit of an advantage because they have a view of where the world is going and where clients may be falling short in, in meeting those challenges. But what they don't do as well, in our judgment, is they don't execute their thinking through the entire myriad of marketing and communications uh, channels. That's not, that hasn't historically been their core business. They are certainly trying to do more of that. They're acquiring a lot of firms, a lot of digital firms, so that they can do more of the execution, not, more of the, not just the strategy. But I think we will find that we're going to compete in a much more, in a much more um, a horizontal way with them from thought leadership right down to Maybe how you that CEO revenues go up, your yields go up, sorry. That's right. And I, th and I think we, we know that we cannot uh, meet our own business ambition if we aren't dealing with the most senior clients in, in, in their organizations uh, on the thought leadership that they, that they demand. And, and Ogilvy has always been well positioned in that. David Ogilvy was loved in the boardroom. Right. And, and I think we've maintained that over time. So what, what, are, what are the few things that you will focus on once you get into your hot seat? Well, the most important thing I'm focusing on now is seeing the world. Right. Um, I'm an American. Sometimes Americans are accused of viewing the world from their desk. That's not me. Um, the benefit I've had in 37 years at Ogilvy is I've gotten to work all around the world. Um, I was in client management and general management in Asia in the, in the mid-80s to the early 90s. I've worked on global clients almost my entire career. I'm used to traveling the world, seeing the world for what it is, not what we would like it to be. And so I'm now coming to India and many other parts of the world with a view of, okay, now it's on my shoulders. I'm now responsible. Uh, to make sure that this global network uh, is, is getting all the support that it needs in this era of great change and great fragmentation. And I need to listen intensely as to the, the experiences that are happening on the ground. So what is your final expectation of India? Since you're here in India, uh, what do you expect India to do to help you do so, your job right? So India has been a jewel in the crown for, since I joined the company and well before. Um, incredibly successful market, great work, amazing leadership, um, and that's going to continue. But I have another prediction for India, in that I believe India is going to show the rest of the world how to leapfrog on a variety of things. First of all, I think the world is getting more local, in a way. Uh, the new age consumer has a much more emotional connection to their local culture, their religions, their, their beliefs and, and, and practices. Never has that not been true in India. And how the Indian market has uh, addressed that in terms of creativity and strategic thinking, I think is going to help uh, us around the world. The other thing is that in India we serve a local market, but we also do work in India that serves beyond that. So our production hubs and our technology that we're investing here in India is going to help markets around the world become more efficient and more effective in our, in our delivery. And then finally, I think we have extraordinary management here. The India company is not just great in its business sector, it's great in the country. And I want it to be a model of leadership for many, many other markets around the world in terms of how to build that trusted brand um, in, a local, in a local context and deliver a global quality standards. You won't find a better market in the world than India for doing that. Perfect. Thank you so much and all the best in your new responsibility. Thank you very I much. I hope to see you as soon as possible. I look forward India. to coming back Thank and you. seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a short break here. When we come back, we'll listen to Miles Young and after that, with Piyush Pandey.